talking about atmosphere and weather. So let's get started talking about the local energy budgets. Now you're probably thinking, what is an energy budget? Well, the energy budget refers to the amount of energy entering the system, the amount leaving the system, and the transfer of energy within the system. So um, basically what this means is the system we're talking about is the global energy system. So we're talking about Earth. The amount of energy is from the sun, the amount leaving the system is from the atmosphere or from the ground, and, and the transfer of energy between those two. So globally, this is actually a balanced system. However, individual latitudes may have a net deficit or surplus of solar radiation. Think of the poles. They are going to have a net deficit. More energy actually leaves than comes in. And this is due to the sun angle and a variety of other things. Whereas the equator has a net surplus. Again, the sun actually gives so much more energy to here, not a lot leaves. So there's an, an, a net surplus at this point. So globally it's balanced, but certain latitudes might have a net deficit or surplus. This picture is actually related to a picture in your textbook, figure 2.1. And this is commonly considered at a global scale. So when we're talking about atmosphere, atmospheric motion, we're talking about things either at a macro level, like global scale, or we're talking about them at a micro level, meaning local scale. So depending upon the type of weather or climate or whatever phenomena we're talking about, it might be more on a micro scale or a macro scale, or something called a meso scale, which is sort of in the middle of the two. So this figure is related to figure 2.1 in your textbook. They're slightly different, but um, they're, they're similar. Now specifically, let's talk about the daytime energy budget. Now there's actually six components to the daytime energy budget. Now these are incoming solar radiation or insulation, we'll talk about that, reflected solar radiation, surface absorption, sensible heat transfer, long wave radiation, and latent heat, which in this case for the daytime is evaporation. I have two figures for you. The one on the right comes directly from your textbook. It's pretty straightforward and simple. The one on the left is also a different type of energy budget. This one is a little bit more complex. It shows you the amount of per by percentage of what leaves, what gets reflected, scattered, and things like that. So each one has its limits and each one has its benefits. So take a look at both to see which one works for you. Throughout this lesson, I use the one on the right, the one from your textbook. So let's break down these components and talk about them individually. The first one, incoming solar radiation or the actual term that's used is called insulation. And we get that term insulation just by taking a couple of the uh, letters from each word. So in -sol -lation. incoming solar radiation. Now that's circled on this picture right here. Now this is the main energy input. This is the stuff that comes from the sun, all that energy. It's usually affected by latitude. So if we're at the poles, we're at the equator, or somewhere in between. Here in Florida, we're sort of close to the equator. And so we actually get a lot more sun than if we were to be um, more up north towards the pole, the North Pole. Depends on season, when the sun is low or high in the sky. So normally during fall or winter, the sun is low in the sky, whereas um, summer, spring, it's pretty high. Again, here in Florida, we really don't see too much of a difference in our seasons. So for us, it's both high in the sky. <laughs> but if we were to be up towards the North Pole, you would see a difference where the sun angle comes from. And your textbook does show uh, on page 25 some of the different percentages of sun angle. And cloud cover. So usually if there's less cloud cover, more radiation reaches the surface. So if there's more cloud cover, not as much radiation gets to the surface. It's going to be a little bit colder. Our second component is reflected solar radiation. So coming from the sun, we have the solar radiation, and it does get reflected off of surfaces at the same angle that it came down on. 
and that's just physics for optics and light. For geography, however, we really just need to know that it's reflected. And the albedo is going to be an important component to understand reflected solar radiation. Now, albedo is a term we did use before, but this is the proportion of energy that, that is reflected back to the atmosphere. It's going to vary with color, so the light colors are more reflective than dark colors. And here's a chart also that sort of shows the reflectivity of various surfaces. So for instance, if we take snow, fresh snow is 80 to 90 percent reflected, so its albedo is really high, which means that about 10 to 20 percent only gets absorbed in this particular case. So a lot of energy actually gets reflected away from the surface. Old snow is a little bit different, 50 to 60. So again, only between 50 and 40 percent of the energy is actually being absorbed by the Earth. Take a look at grass. Grass is 5 to 25 percent reflected. So this means that a lot more energy gets absorbed in this case than in snow, for instance. So it's important to understand the albedo because then we get to know how much energy actually gets absorbed and that's the important part, how much energy is there for us here at the surface. Our third component is surface absorption. Now heat has the potential to be conducted through layers of the earth depending upon the type of surface. So if we know the albedo, we tend to know how much energy is being absorbed by the surface. Sometimes, however, we have um, surface layers that might not be good conductors of heat. So rock, for instance, is a poor conductor of heat. Heat will pretty much remain at the surface. It's not going to go below the rock, and thus it's not going to really be absorbed. So if we have examples of soil, soil is a little bit better at conducting heat. Not much, but a little bit better. Whereas we have other substances, and that stuff's going to be absorbed right away. So we have to be careful of what type of surface we're talking about in order to understand the absorption. If you think of this in terms of urban areas, so your concrete jungles, remember concrete is a poor conductor of heat as well. So not a lot of energy will be conducted um, into the ground at these parts. Our fourth component is something called sensible heat transfer. Now this refers to the movement of parcels of air into and out from the area being studied. Basically, this is the normal stuff that goes on in the atmosphere. So for example, if the air is warmed by the surface, um, this actually, this air might begin to rise through convection, and it's going to be replaced by cooler air. So whatever happens normally, if an air surface comes, um, becomes warmer or cooler, it's going to move away or come in. This is the normal stuff. This is the sensible heat transfer. This is the stuff that normally happens in the day, day to day. Our fifth component is long wave radiation. Now this refers to the radiation of energy from the Earth into the atmosphere. So this is the stuff that comes from the surface of the Earth like I mentioned earlier in, in the last video. So long wave radiation is the stuff that was already rated, uh, radiated by the sun. It was absorbed by the, the earth and now it's being re-radiated up as long wave radiation. And this happens a lot as well from clouds. It can be re-radiated downward from the clouds itself. So long wave radiation will also have some sort of effect on the daytime energy budget. And finally, we have latent heat transfer. So in the daytime, we're actually referring to evaporation. So as liquid water is converted to a gas or to water vapor, energy is used up. So this means that that energy is not available for any sort of temperature increase or um, local energy levels because it's being used up just to convert from liquid water to water vapor. So there's no energy in this case. However, it still is a part of what's going on because it's using some of that energy that gets uh, radiated into uh, the area from the sun. So if you take a look back at all of the components, go back to the beginning, we have um, six components to our daytime energy budget. We have the first one being insulation, 
Number two is reflected solar radiation. Three, surface absorption. Four, sensible heat transfer. Five, long wave radiation. Six, latent heat evaporation. So those are our six components.